Let's pick up where we left off on how do you check a compass when you buy a little kind of a toy compass for your car or whatever to use in a, an emergency situation to tell that it's really accurate. All right, Mark. Well, as you know that most places you go to pick up a compass, it's inside of a building, and traditionally there's a lot of metal around. Well, that's going to dis uh, disorient your uh, ability to check this compass actively. And my recommendation is try to take it out of the building next to a, a real good compass. Uh, anything that's on a boat or anything that's outside of a lot of major uh, metal structures and test it. Make sure that it's, it's as, as close as possible to the compass that you have available at your leisure that you know is a good compass. So it might be difficult if you're at Sears or somewhere, you know, in the middle of town to run down to the boat and test it. That's so right. I, I guess you would have to try to pick something that's good and take it down to your boat and test it that way. Yeah. And if it's not accurate, then take it back. That's my recommendation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's probably the best and safest way to do it. Uh, some of the other things that I've brought today are signaling devices. And one of those is this strobe light. Now, this is what we teach the Navy people to use because uh, it's a very effective means of identifying an individual down in the water. And uh, it's uh, primarily used for locating down individuals that are in the water and uh, it can be readily seen at far distances, up to 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. And how this operates is you just push the button down at the bottom and it blinks on and off. It's very simple, works and it's very effective. And uh, one of the other things that we do with these is we put Velcro on the back of them, mm -hmm. as we do with a lot of our survival gear, so that you can attach it to your vest or your, to your helmet if you have a helmet. As I do know, though, and you probably do, especially in 25-foot seas, gale winds, if something's not tied to you, that's absolutely you right. You might as well throw it away. Yeah. So there is a spot I notice on there for sure. A there's there's a you know, there's a spot to here to tie it on. As you notice, we had a piece that was tied on mm -hmm. here, and the. That's uh, what you can get these just about at any yachting store. Uh, a lot of your sporting goods stores carry these items. And it usually lasts anywhere from eight to 10 hours. Of course, you wouldn't have it going constantly at eight to 10 hours, but it is a very effective means you of You might uh, see sailing. a plane or a boat right, and right. turn it on. Uh -huh. Now, if someone were to fall in the water, I imagine at night, so that their friends can pick them up and increase their survival odds, that would be a, a, right. a necessity. And this light itself probably runs somewhere between 20 and $30. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's probably one of the most uh, effective means of locating someone in the water. Plus, uh, you might want to carry an extra battery or two and check yes. it from time to time. Yes, you could. A lot of people get out there with stuff and find the battery shot. That's right. Okay, and uh, some of the other items that I like to show you is just your everyday pocket knife. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't go out there. Now, this is nothing like a Rambo knife or anything like that, but you want a basic knife that has a couple different blades on it to perform different functions. You have a, a regular blade on it, such as this. You have a uh, screwdriver blade with a can opener on it and uh, another blade on it with a sharp point. Basically, any Swiss knife will do the same thing. Uh, and try to get one that's made out of stainless steel. That way, it, it resists corrosion a little bit longer. Uh, I, uh, on a knife, I noticed when I was in the Marine Corps, I flew back seat in F4s and stuff, and we had all the survival gear hooked to us. And they had plastic switch blades, so you could open it with one hand right. in case your arm is injured uh -huh. and no, cut, we, cut we, your parachute loose or right. something. Right, we call that a shroud line cutter. Mm -hmm. And I didn't bring one with me today because it's not readily accessible to the general public in order to attain one. Uh, and uh, I, my personal recommendation is to go with a knife like this because it does a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that we carry with them is a small pen light. Uh, a flashlight, whether it be this size or such as this size right here, is a very effective means. Now, if you're at, at sea at night and you're in a life raft and 15, 20 foot swells, uh, there's going to be a lot of times when you need a flashlight in order to see something, like you've got a piece of survival gear that you need to read instructions. Well, it's pretty difficult if you don't have a source of light, and that can be accomplished either by a pen light such as this or an average everyday run-of-the-mill D-cell. I wonder how long the batteries will hold up in that versus a small one. Do you have any idea? Well, they're comparable, actually. When you start talking about the new types of batteries that we have on the market nowadays, uh, you can probably go and change the batteries once a year if you don't use them, but I would recommend changing them once a year anyway, you know, with a new so energy So the cell. small one, you could actually carry that on your vest with a couple right. extra batteries sure, in, sure. and be, take up less room and weight than the right. large. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's just one of the other things. Um, and then, of course, you've got another signaling device, it's a general all-purpose whistle. Now, a lot of people may say, well, what's a whistle going to do me, for me out there? Well, it does a couple different things, Mark. One of the things it does is it gets the entire group together to locate 
because if you're out in the open ocean and you all have life preservers on, it's nice to be able to know where everybody is. And by using a whistle, you can do that. And along the same lines, just a uh, regular roll of uh, shroud line, what we call shroud line, you can get anything like uh, clothesline. Uh, this does a, a couple different things, and ingenuity can play a, a big part in this. By using a regular piece of rope, shroud line, or anything such as that, you can use that to tie everybody together. You can use it to tie all the survival gear together. Uh, and that's one thing I'd like to stress an awful lot, is to make sure that all that survival gear is tied together, because once you lose it and it goes down in the water, you'll never get it back. Mm -hmm. So you really want it tied to you, to yes. your body. And then if you, you your ship went down, you didn't get it in a raft or an inflatable, at least you can tie yourselves together right. and, and keep the body heat yeah, in. And, and also to keep from losing anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very important. Um, and then again, one of the other signaling devices is a signal mirror. Now, a lot of people will look at the signal mirror and they'll say to themselves, well, what's that going to do for me? This signal mirror has saved more lives uh, during survival situations than any other piece of survival equipment there is. Uh, it's a very effective tool. It can be seen up to 40 and 50 miles away. And uh, like I said, it saved more lives than anything else. And uh, any basic mirror will do it. However, they have signaling mirrors set up primarily to do this job. And it's very effective means you can read the instructions on the back, tell you exactly how to work on it. But primarily, all you're doing is reflecting the sunlight. Uh, we've known people that have used this on hazy days and attracted an aircraft uh, 20, 30 miles away. I notice there's a hole in the survival type signal mirror for your line, right. which of course you want. And there's also a hole in the center. We have about a minute and a half here of this segment. Could you tell us what that's for or how to okay, use it? Okay, the hole in the middle here is basically just so you, the user, can use this to angle the light itself. Now you know that you can take a, a, nice, a nice sunny day and you can just about spot where the reflection is going to be. However, on a hazy day or on a, on a full moon night, now I got to tell you this is very effective at night on a full moon also, you can use this by lining up the sun and the area that you want to shine it to and by collecting, looking through here and you can line up the little uh, marks. Through the little hole Right, there. through the little mm -hmm. holes and there's a mesh screen on the inside here to give you a, a, an easier uh, idea. Or like a plane at 20,000 feet, right, right, right. might be hard to see the shiny That's spot right. on it. Right. But uh, again, I you know I emphasize this to almost every survivor that this is probably one of the more effective means of signaling uh, that you can have, and it's probably the cheapest also. No batteries. No batteries needed, and you don't have to go on a regular inspection cycle with it. And uh, besides, if you're a little vain, you can get out there in that life raft and start uh, you know primping and propping. You know, <laughs> maybe you're going to get saved soon. Hey, it would be nice for the ladies. Put yes, it, it on their on their gear. Okay, well, we're, we have some other equipment I understand, but uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to come right back and go over the May West Fest, is it? Sure. Right. Okay, thanks. thanks.